Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I wanna share with you a useful tip for better managing your collision code in Unity. So I've got this sample scene here to illustrate the approach. So this is my player, and I want the player to collide with these spikes. And you can see here, each spike has a collider. You can have a box collider, a circle collider, polygon collider. And if you're working in 3D, you will have just the standard um, collider type. And if you're working in 2D, you will have the 2D version. You can see here 2D. You can see here when I click on these uh, different spikes, they have a tag of damage. The difference between this red spike and the white spike is that one is a trigger and one is not a trigger. So all this means is when I play it, the one which is not a trigger serves like a wall, like a solid object, and the ones which are a trigger allow the player to move through. So this is all pretty standard stuff if you're um, working with Unity. So now onto the code, and this is where the useful strategy is. So on the player, in this case we have a um, box collider also, which is not a trigger and we have a collision script. So in this collision script, we just have the start and the update. We'll just delete those for the moment because we don't need it. And I've just got this um, do damage to place. And in there, we'll just put a debug.log and we'll say hit. So Unity has built-in collision techniques, on trigger enter and on collision enter, depending on if you're using a trigger collider or not. And if you're using 2D, it'll be on trigger into 2D. So I'll just block those in quickly on collision into 2D. So what you typically do here, you do something like if collision dot game object dot compare tag, and I've got a damage tag set up on those two spike objects. So I'll say damage, then I'll call this uh, do damage to player function here. All right, and I'll do the same in here. And you'll notice that these two methods have two different argument types. One is a collider 2D and one is collision 2D, which gets a bit confusing at times, but all it means is basically you can access the compare method directly on one. You see the collider, you can access it, but on this one, you have to actually write uh, game object and you can write them on both and it'll work the same anyway just a little detail worth mentioning all right so let's quickly run this all right, so we hit that one okay you can see in our console hit we've registered a hit and we'll go over here boom hit we're hitting those spikes so that's really good those both those collision methods are working beautifully however this and this it's a bit convoluted in, in the sense that we're, we're kind of doing the same thing twice, you see? We're checking for the tag and the tag here. This can kind of be centralized, and this is the tip that I've been waiting to get to. And funnily enough, this approach has not really been covered in any tutorials that I've seen, but um, it's something that I uh, use often. So check this out. So we'll do void process collision, and for the parameter will put a uh, type of game object and we can just say um, well we can say collider it's a good way to think about it so you might know where I'm going with this at this point so rather than doing both these checks here we're going to offload and centralize that logic into here and we'll just change that to collider so all we have to do now would delete this stuff here. And instead we're gonna say process collision, collision dot uh, game object. And we'll copy the same into there. So you can immediately see the simplicity of this. And the, and the reason this is important is because quite often these collision checks, they can get quite big. Like I've got um, on trigger enters and on collision enters that if I didn't centralize it, I'd be basically writing the same logic, um, large amounts of logic text twice. So let's just run that to see if it works. Okay, so have our console open. Boom, hit. Hit, hit, hit. Okay, so that's working exactly as it should. 
two logic flows centralized into one function, collision managed in one place very cleanly. So what you're actually looking at here is a new Unity asset I'm working on. Now the purpose of this asset is gonna to be to be a useful starting point for people trying to make uh, platformers. So it has a responsive Mario style jump, and this is actually the kind of same system I'm using in my own uh, project, Blood and Mead. This has got a very precise platforming collision, and it has you know running jumps like you would find in Mario. So you big jumps. And importantly, it has mobile controls built in. We hopefully this project will be um, complete in the next week or so. So depending on when you're watching this video, check the description below and that link might be available. So that's it guys. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, make sure you give it a big thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you like, come by the Discord. We have a nice group of developers there who are engaging in different um, interesting creative ideas around art, music, game design, coding, and all things like that. So, all right guys, all the best. See you in the next video.